Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Rory Reed, and today we have another uh, figurative piece that we're gonna be gonna be doing, as you can see on the screen. I'm gonna give a quick voiceover for um, this piece so that you guys have something to listen to while you watch. Uh, I usually start out my pieces like this with a sketch. Um, if I have time, I'll sketch it out freehand. If not, then I'll usually use some type of uh, either a printout with transfer paper to transfer it to the canvas or um, you know if it's a larger piece I'll use a projector something of that sort to just get a quick sketch save me about 30 minutes to an hour trying to sketch out uh, you know a big piece or a more elaborate piece after I get the outline I usually try to outline it with a uh, dark color in this case I used Payne's gray and then once that's done I start putting in my shadows and then some of the mid-tones as well, just to sculpt the piece out. Um, I, I paint with acrylic paints, so before I begin the painting, I usually uh, work out a gradient from my shadows to um, the highlights. And I usually do about five stops or five positions. So the darkest shadow color, a little bit lighter than that, a little bit lighter than that. And I have five of those um, on the palette. And when I'm starting off, I usually just use the the first three from the darkest. So I go the darkest shadow color, a little bit lighter than that, a little bit lighter than that. And those three is what I do mostly when I begin a painting, because towards the end, I'll fill in a little bit more um, brighter values and then top it off with the highlights towards the end of the piece. So what you're seeing on the um, canvas now is just the those first three as i said underneath her leg you can see the darkest um, shadow that i've mixed on the palette and that will be adjusted as the painting goes if i make the background darker it's going to look a little bit washed out so i'll have to put some of the um, background color into the uh, shadow area there just little minor things like that to um, get the piece to work well together did another pass on the background as well to um you know make the color more a bit more full which is usually what you have to do with acrylic paint and uh, or well any paint really and um so that's about my second pass on the background is looking a bit more uh full and rich we're able to see the true color and some of the uh the white in the canvas is uh covered up well more of it is than before from there just bouncing around making sure I get rid of all the canvas color or as, as much as I need nowadays I'm usually leaving a little bit of it in because I find it more interesting to have sort of a chaotic abstract kind of kind of piece going a more painterly style if you will and um, as opposed to when I first began painting I usually you know refined everything now now I realize it uh, for me personally I like the this style more where it's a little bit abstract so people know that it's a painting when they first look at it you know right now just covering up the rest of the figure and um, the colors I'm using now on my palette are Payne's gray is the that blackish color you see me using there in the hair I've mixed that myself you can mix it if you don't have Payne's gray you can use uh, ultramarine blue and uh, black and that will give you a pain's grayish, you know, type of color. Throw a little bit of thalo blue in there if you have have that as well. And so I'm using pain's gray, a turquoise uh, green color that I mix myself as well. You can usually use like an em emerald green and thalo blue or something like that with a little bit of black. Mars black if you got that will work. And then I'm using cat orange medium. Uh, Naples yellow and then uh, titanium white and some cerulean blue hair in there I very scarcely use cerulean blue if I need the uh, turquoise green color which is the color I'm, I'm mostly focused on in my pieces now um, I'll add a little bit of uh, cerulean blue to like you know mix it up change the uh, the color a little bit just to give the eye something else to look to and now you see me filling in some more of the background here with some abstractions to give it a little bit more interest and loving how the piece is turning out so far 
from here I'm just reworking the um, the figure again I usually try to do about three passes on all my um, paintings I do the first pass and then the second coat and then the third coat and then after the third coat I'll do any um, highlight adjustments shadow adjustments and any fine details that need to be done to make the piece look uh, workable or finished you know decided to leave the couch area a bit abstract in here as well and from this point on we're just doing nothing but uh, work on the figure itself darkening the darks that need to be darkened and uh, lightening the light areas as well giving a good contrast you know to match the contrast you see in the background also for some strange reason I always uh, leave the faces <laughs> last because in these um, few pieces that I've been uploading recently I'm far more interested in getting the figure down to uh, where I want it and not so much worried about the the face because I usually end up covering it with some sort of abstract element you know some abstract element just um, to keep the user or the viewer's attention on the figure which is the main focal point of the piece so here i decided to jump and touch up the face a little bit just make it a bit more refined it was looking a little unfinished before so we just smooth some things out get some of the uh planes in as best as we can this is a 9 by 12 canvas uh, i believe a canvas panel so the the head area is very small so you can only put so much detail in you know into that small of an area but i think it's it's good enough so far decided to do a bit of harmonizing the colors here so we're adding some of that background color in on the skin tone and as you can see it's, it's blending um the background and the foreground as well that makes her look like she's in this space with, with whatever blue or, or you know light is hitting uh, the skin kind of immerses her in the atmosphere that's a really good tip um, for those of you out there who understand what I'm talking about and again just more the same man this can be considered detailing we're just refining areas and um, the portions of her uh, body that are farther back we're darkening those up a bit as you can see like her hip area and um, uh, the hands on the right side we're just leaving those in shadow take away some of the um, the focus off of those and then the ones that are in the foreground like her leg knee and upper body area we're you know lightening those up to um, just giving a slight indication of it being more closer towards the viewer whenever I'm doing um, figures I like to leave some in shadow and bring some into the light because it, it adds it's like um, painting like an object you know it, it adds more depth to uh, the piece itself as well as the figure and makes it more interesting in my opinion Usually when you see people paint figures, it's all, you know, everything is in um, the same sort of light. There's no difference. There's this way when you leave some of the body in shadow and, and put some in the light in the foreground, it, it adds very nice depth, I find. But that's just my personal preference. You know, you can paint however you see fit. So working a little bit now on the uh, lingerie and um, just filling it in, uh, making that more a bit more detailed as well. And you know, as to have it not stand out too much from the rest of the uh, the piece. Using a palette knife now to put in some lines and abstractions as well. which is one of my personal favorite things to do in my pieces. I just love um, line work, you know, contrasting with the curves of like the uh, the figure, the straight lines really uh, 
gives it a, a special element I feel and there you have it that's the piece it's called gaze by your boy Rory Reed me uh, if you're interested in this piece there's a store link below that you can click and uh, also I have uploaded a couple of designs of my older pieces to Teespring as you can see here it's at teespring.com slash store slash Rory Reed art check those out if you'd like to support me and the channel and that's going to be it for today. I will be uploading a longer version of this video to my Patreon. If you're interested in that, head over there and click the uh, link below. Uh, and yeah, just like and subscribe, support the channel, share the video. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.